Okay, <clears throat> chapter two, How We Learn by Benedict Carey. The power of forgetting. Once again, we're talking about a concept which is a little bit contrary to what we would assume. <clears throat> we think of forgetting as the enemy of learning. And in fact, uh, he asserts that forgetting can be useful. So if we are in a spelling bee, it's important that we remember the spelling of chrysanthemum. It's important that we remember that it's C-H-R-Y instead of I, for example. And yet, at the same time, it's not relevant for us to know the ingredients of French toast or the address of the drugstore or the name of the Speaker of the, the House of Representatives. It's important <clears throat> that we keep at the tip of our tongue or in our, in our most accessible memory, the things that are going to be most relevant to us. Therefore, for example, if I am going to, in fact, make French toast, then the spelling of chrysanthemum is not, in fact, important. So one of the skills, one of the ways that forgetting can help us is by filtering out the information that, it, in fact, is not necessary to the task that we're doing right now. Also, a little bit of forgetting can help us to strengthen our memory a little bit ironically by a, we have a little bit of breakdown and by recalling the information, it brings it back to uh, our, present, our present memory. So for example, if I tell a story about how I got lost on the metro each time I tell that story, if I tell that story three times, the memory is going to strengthen. And we all have stories about our childhood, maybe that we tell with our brothers and sisters, that become strengthened and prioritized over other. So we don't, for example, remember what we had for dinner on uh, January 14th, 1987. We have no idea. But perhaps we remember some incident or conversation that we had or some place that we went that was really special around that time in our lives. So those memories become stronger as we tell and retell and remember and re-remember those moments. And what we had for dinner on January 14th, 1987 is not completely lost but has been, because we have with 100 billion uh, neurons in our brain, I was forgetting the word neuron, neuron um, we have enough uh, storage space to remember every meal we've ever had every day of our lives. But in fact, we forget those things because they're not, they're not relevant to uh, or necessary in our lives and in the same way if we are to learn a list of random letters rur, hal, mek, be, sok, dus and then we're asked to recall those uh, over time that memory is going to fade so I can memorize a series of 14 numbers but if it has no purpose then I will forget it very quickly. Uh, whereas if I memorize a poem, uh, then it's more meaningful. So um, and this is something that it, at the turn of the, the 20th century, a researcher named Philip Boswood Ballard, uh, who was also a, a teacher working in uh, London's working class, East End with a group of students who were thought to um, have learning difficulties, he found that in fact they did not uh, and that they would, for example, learn a poem that would be tested right afterward and then they had no contact with the poem for two days. They were tested two days later and in fact their test scores went up over time. And uh, they speculate here that in fact that is likely because the poem 
was imbued with meaning, whereas the nonsense words uh, dissipate rapidly because they, in fact, are completely random. Um, and I wonder, you know, I have, as a world language teacher, we work to imbue everything with meaning. So through telling stories, through um, couching language in, in meaningful cultural uh, elements, we increase memory. And we, al we also find that when we ask students to memorize a list of all the fruits and vegetables um, outside of context, that, that they may be able to memorize them, produce them on a test. And then if they're not asked to recall them, then those become quickly lost because they're not necessary. And so the implications for us as teachers is if you store something, it's in there for good, but it may not be, current, uh, it may not be currently accessible unless you find that you need it. And so when you find yourself in a market, then you, you will be required to come up with all of those names of, of fruits and vegetables in order to get the work done uh, that you need to. Uh, I had this experience, and he mentions this, uh, of driving uh, in England just recently. And one of the most difficult things for me is driving on the other side of the road was that the stick shift was on the left side. So instead of using my right hand to change gears, I had to use my left. And the other thing is that the, uh, the turn signal was on the opposite side too. So I would, every time I, I went to make a turn, I would turn on the windshield wipers and it would go shh, 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 shh before I remembered. And it was incredible to me that um, how difficult it was to drive, uh, drive in Britain. Um, but, uh, old, uh, but even though I learned new skills, eventually I learned to use the turn signal and to drive on the other side of the road. But when I came back to the United States, the adjustment back to driving on the left side of the road was, was very smooth because old instincts are easy, old memories uh, come back uh, very easily and are easily accessed, even though I had to suppress <clears throat> that memory in order to learn a new skill, which was right, driving on the other side of the road. So, great chapter, forgetting is good, uh, and let's learn some more.